Hot Active Virgin. So for my SLO, I did Ariana. Ariana is a 17-year-old girl, and she's a junior at Pencrest. Um, Ariana is at a first grade level for math, and that is what her um, IEP goals are based off of. So this SLO was definitely a little bit different because Ariana um, had a tendency to be absent, and their curriculum was very scripted. Um, but the IP goal that was aligned with my SLO was given five elapsed time problems in digital or analog form. Ariana will be able to tell how many hours have passed in between two times to the nearest hour with 80% accuracy in three consecutive biweekly trials. So I was not able to perform this exactly biweekly because of Ariana's schedule as well as the fact that they had a very, um, they had a set lesson every time I was there, so it was hard for me to kind of pull out Ariana. So questions that I really, I felt went with this was, in what way does being able to tell how much time has passed bring Ariana closer to general education? How will being able to tell time help Ariana in her life after high school? Why is errorless learning most beneficial in supporting Ariana in being able to tell how much time has passed? So, um, Ariana's pre-assessment and post-assessment was given in three sets, and each set was five questions, so 15 questions total. Ariana was given breaks in between, and in her regular curriculum, she's given breaks often. Um, the sets were broken up, and the first set were only one-hour increments, so from um, how many hours is it passed from one o'clock to two o'clock? That kind of helps her understand that she's just counting up. We did not get as far into AM and PM as I would have liked and would have anticipated. But that is not exactly, um, it just wasn't conducive to the environment that we were in for this field placement. Once, the f once Ariana fully grasped the topic and I get started giving her times further apart for the pre-assessment and post or the pre-assessment as well as the post-assessment but that is further down the line um and I marked off you know if she got it right with a check mark and wrong with an x um as far as keeping the validity and reliability it's the same she we were given we did it the same time I was there every day the same time um in the same room she had the same resources as far as having a number line in front of her. Um, she has a number line on her desk always, so I didn't take that away because I felt like that was a tool that she was used to having during all of her assessments. So I wanted to keep it the same just to not stress her out. So the initial screening was um, February 6th, and then the um, pre-assessment date was February 13th. My post-assessment date was um, May 5th. Now, all of these dates are very spread out, and it was definitely more spread out than I would have liked. Every time I went back to it, she kind of was still trying to figure out, like, what we were doing. So, our baseline um, was 30%, and then we did end up getting to... Um, the first time we did it, it was, her baseline was 30%, then we got trial 1, 57%, trial 2, 71%, trial 3, 75%. So that was for the first date. And then the second date, um, trial 1, 40%, trial 2, 60%, trial 3, 40%. So this is also based off of the amount of time that she was working with these, because when I was not working with her, um, I don't believe that she had any support in these subjects. This is definitely an individualized growth target as far as it was on her IP, and I have no reason to believe that it was on anybody else's. And when I'm there during their math time, they are always doing the same activity, and it has nothing to do with this. So in the first lesson, we used a physical clock to kind of just understand the aspect of a clock, and when counting up, each hour, you can also just count up by numbers. So I asked the student to count from one number to another, and then I helped her understand that that is the same thing as hours. So if I said 
count from one to three and she said one two three i was like how many did you count up she said two and then we kind of got to the understanding that that was two hours um and then i started prompting her with okay so can you count from three to six and then she would give me the answer of three and then i would say so what does that mean when i started giving her bigger jumps for example five to eight um i would give her a chance to kind of move the hour hand and to kind of feel what was going on however i did end up cutting in quite a bit because i did want her air learning to be errorless um <coughs> with this um planning it was Ariana started getting frustrated, especially towards the end when we started progressing. Um, she also is used to having very, very short lessons, I've noticed. So towards the end, she did start having some fatigue. In lesson two, she definitely enjoyed a lot more. I had a um, picture of her schedule printed out on her desk. We crossed off the times or the minutes, and we just used the hour. So, for example, her class ends at 11.59, we cross off the 11, and we just made sure that every class had a number to it, even if it wasn't exactly accurate. Um, I did this just kind of to help her understand that there is reasoning behind it. Again, going back to why are we doing this, um, helping her bring her, help to bring her closer to generalization, but also life after high school. So... We worked on that quite a bit, and then I would say things like how many hours are between yoga and math, and um, Ariana, being insightful as she is, would be like, okay, well, like, we also eat lunch and this and that, and <coughs> I absolutely encouraged her to kind of make those connections. Um, as far as planning these lessons, I really just talked to Dr. Lewis. He um, was super helpful in kind of giving me um, ideas of how he would do it and how he has began to kind of brainstorm doing this from my understanding he is going to continue working with her on these because these are her IEP goals and her IEP meeting is at the end of this year um and then you know I definitely would have loved to have more time to build off of this lesson and really get into the nitty-gritty of it um, it just wasn't necessarily conducive to our setup, but yes, that's my SLO, and she definitely did improve, which I loved to see, and she was a pleasure to work with, and I really enjoyed, um, my field placement this semester, so thank you so much.